And we'd like to say grace and peace to one and grace and peace to all, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Truly, I will bless his holy name. We honor God yet once again on our prophetic prayer line. We're just making some quick adjustments right fast this morning, so you all just bear with us. Amen. This new assignment that we have uh, has many uh, coats of color to it, and so we bless God for what God is doing yet once again in our lives. We say good morning, God. God. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we command our day today, every plot, every ploy, every wicked device, everything that Satan conjured up for this day, we call it to naught by the blood of Jesus. We plead and apply the blood of Jesus. We declare this day, Father, that there will be no incidents. There will be no accidents. There will be no premature death. There will be no untimely deaths. There will be no fires. There will be no robbery. No burglaries, no weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper, for this is the heritage of the servants of the Most High God. We are the head and not the tail. We are the lenders and not the borrowers. And so, Father, we take spiritual authority over the atmosphere, and we declare today that the saints of the God, they shall rest, rule, reign henceforth, now and forevermore. It is done in Jesus' name, and we thank God yet once again. We say good morning to our Facebook family. We say good morning to travailing men and women. This is travailing men and women's prophetic prayer line, changing a nation back to God through prayer. God asked me a question over five years ago. He said, has a nation changed their God? Has a nation actually gone uh, to other gods other than the God of their salvation? He said, daughter, I need for you to change this nation back to me. And so now we are embracing the assignment that God has given us. God gave us an assignment to uh, let Pharaoh know once again, he's sending yet a modern day Moses to rescue the people of God, those that are in bondage. And so we bless God for you this morning. We thank God that God had you in mind when he formed this prayer line eight years ago. God knew exactly what you were going to need. He knew exactly what was going to be in the heart set and the minds of the believers. He knew things that were going to be said and done that are not in order for your life to be able to flourish in the way that God would have you to do it. So my job is, and my main objective is, I'm not a taskmaster. I'm strict and I'm stern. Uh, I used to tell my church so affectionately that you may not like me now, but you're going to love me on judgment day. Amen. You're going to love everything that the Lord has said through me for you on judgment day. And so we bless God for that yet once again. We thank God for this new genre that God has placed us in, this new platform that the Lord has summoned us to be in. Uh, for we know that we're not a selfish person, uh, but we do what thus saith the Lord in the timeliness of the Kairos in which God has the assignment in our lives. There is someone that needs to know God in a real way. There is someone that needs to experience God in ways that they've never experienced him before. And so when he sends a major prophet to do the job, it's not a job for a minor prophet. It's time for the general to step in. It's time the general to take place. It's time for us to take a stance in that what God is doing for us. And we're the ones for the job. And we make no apologies for the assignment that God has given us. And so we embrace you this morning, uh, travailing men and women. You're now on travailing men and women, changing a nation through prayer, prophetic prayer line. And we embrace all newcomers. If you all on Facebook now, if you would share this, if you would add someone to it, let everyone know that Moses with the skirt on is here to set God's people free. And we bless God for that this morning. We have a few announcements uh, to make first before we start on the prophetic utterance today. We've got a few announcements that we've got to make because we're getting ready for you to live life. Amen. We're, we're so thankful for what we've done thus far in life, but it's time for us to really live life. A lot of times we just go through the motions and we're going to work each and every day and, and we're not really uh, actually fulfilling filling life. So the Lord has given me an assignment for the men and women of God to be able to live. And we always so affectionately say when we end our prayer line every day, live fully and live freely. And so that's the assignment that I have for the men and women of God to learn how to live fully, but yet freely. So we have a ladies retreat that is planned. Our first retreat was uh, this year. Uh, we went to the Callaway Gardens, a beautiful place that was in Georgia in the mountains, and we took the ladies up there with us, and we had planned a trip to Paris. Well, our prayer line mother said that that wouldn't be wisdom for this uh, 2018, so we're going to put that on the back burner, but we will still be going to Paris soon to come. But in 2018, of August 2018, we're going to the Dominican Republic. That's right. We're going to the Dominican Republic, and we want to invite as many that want to attend with us to come and go with us. Come and go with 
with us to the Dominican Republic, August the 13th through the 17th are our dates. We've got six days and five nights of luxury uh, accommodations that are out of this world, uh, accommodations that are set for a king and a queen, and that's who we are. We are the royal priesthood of God, and so we want for everyone to come with us August the 13th through the 17th in 2018. Uh, we are going to uh, the Crown Villas in the Dominican Republic, and they call their villas mansions. That's right. These mansions are three and four bedroom mansions. And so you get your girlfriends together, collect everyone that you want to take this journey with you. And we're going to have fun. That's right. We're going to have adventurous funds. We may go scuba diving. Uh, we may, may go parasailing on last year, uh, this year on our ladies retreat, we went zip lining. Oh my God, my shoe. <laughs> yes, we did. We went zip lining and boy, didn't we have fun. And one of the, uh, eldest, our uh, eldest, uh, uh, prayer line partners. I was the one that completed the course more so than any of the young ones. Amen. She put us to shame. And so we bless God. I want you to be a part of this. We're encouraging everyone to come and be a part of our venture. Uh, we call it connecting with life. That's right. Our latest conference is called connecting with life. And we want for everyone to be able to connect with life. Again, your dates are August the 13th through the 17th, 2018. We've broken it down that you can have three uh, minimal deposits and then you can pay in full with these three minimal deposits that you make. It's only $235 per deposit. You've got three deposits of only $235. Now that's affordable for anyone that really wants to go. Call our administrative line at 407-545-1133 for further information and details about this Connecting with Life Ladies Retreat. You don't want to miss it. Don't wait till the last minute. Make sure that you're there on a timely mannerism. I have another number I'd like to share with you also if you want to communicate with me, uh, if you want to have a prayer request, if you want for me to uh, uh, listen to your prayer request and uh, pray for God for you, pray and intercede with you about God, the number, if you want to contact me, I'm Dr. Loretta V. Harris, amen, uh, Dr. Loretta V. Harris, amen, good morning, precious, amen, and so the um, a number for you to call me is 855-292-7799. Again, that number is 855-292-7799. Call that number if you've got a prayer request. If you want me to touch and agree with you, uh, we can get a prayer through. We do know how to pray. Your Bible declares that if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and turn from their wicked ways. I have to put that in there first. Turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. This land is in need of healing. Healing. It's not necessarily the body of Christ per se. Uh, it's the fact that the enemy has given so many smoke screens to the body of Christ that we can't fulfill the objective that God has for us in its entirety. And so we have to let a people understand and recognize the anointing that we walk in, the power that we walk in, and the favor that we walk in. And so we bless God for that this morning. Amen. Thank God for you. We um, had a dream this morning. And the Lord showed me uh, a, a people uh, that were babysitting babies. And I saw these people that were seeing about children and they didn't seem to seem to know what they were doing. Um, they were just haphazardly putting children in places in which they were not safe and uh, seemingly not being very attentive to the children. And so I was looking at them and, and not only did they have little children, but watch this, they had small puppies as well. So in my dream, I'm looking at them and the little puppies were running around and there was one that was very cute that they was paying a lot of attention to, but the little scrubby scraggly one, no one was paying attention to him. And I'm saying to myself, God, it's funny how everybody's paying attention to the little cute one. They wanted to make sure that he was safe and wanted to make sure that he was secure. Uh, but that one that seemed to not, you know, the mutt, we call them mutts. Uh, that was just not a name brand, so to speak, type quality of a, a little puppy. And, and the babies, they had no real concerns of. And so it seemed as if that they had the wrong people attending these babies. And so I watched them and I watched them from afar. And then I began to say, Lord, I'm going to have to step in and do something to help these babies. Uh, so about that time, I asked a young girl, I said, listen, can I help you see about the baby? 
And she said, yeah, sure, I don't care. So she placed the baby haphazardly on a corner of a bed. And by the time I got up to walk across the room, this is in a dream now. In my dream, by the time I got uh, up to walk across the room, the baby began to tumble and fall. And I'm saying, my God, don't, didn't she see that the place that she put this baby in what was not that, amen, of which the baby would be safe. And so um, I, I was rushing to, to get the baby, which I could have gotten a better speed to probably stop the fall of the baby. But there was something inside of me that wanted to show her that you were not placing this baby in a safe position, not understanding that death of an injury that that baby could sustain had I moved just a little further. So I'm going into the prophetic realm now. This is a prophetic dream to me, what God showed me. And I began to ask him when I got up, I said, Lord, what was the dream about? He said, well, it's a prophetic dream. Uh, number one is that my babies have been in the wrong hands of those that are not providers, that my children have, and make hope by shy, that my children have been left in the hands of those that have no real sense of a nurturing or a maturing, a maturation of a child. And so when a baby grows up, sometimes they've sustained injuries, even from infancy that are still there with them. They've uh, sustained injuries that's going to stay with them for the rest of their lives. And so when I scurried over to rush over, but I really could have gone a little faster. He said, this is the same thing that I told you with your assignment, that you did the assignment, but how fast did you do it? How rapidly did you do it? How was your response time in getting to the ones that needed my help? He said, now you really went there to them, but you had to prove a point. He said, so now you don't have to prove a point to anyone else to let them know that I've assigned you to save my people. Gl glory to God. I've assigned you to save my people. So in me going there, as I told you earlier, I could have gotten there a little faster because I could have ran. I could have sprinted just a little faster, but it's something in me in the dream wanted them to see that you're not the ones to see about this baby. So I'm trying to make a point to them, but God said, you prove nothing to no man, but to do what? But to love him. So he said, I'm going to need you to take these babies, amen, somebody, and rescue them. I'm going to need you to get in a hurry about the assignment that I've given you for my babies. And so, there have been some people of God who have been mistreated. There's been some people of God who have been injured. There's been some people of God who have sustained injuries that's going to be there for the rest of their lives unless there is someone that can come and correct the wrong that has been done to the body of Christ. And so it's my job to come in right now because I know the timing of God. I know him, him but go by shy. I know him to be the author and the finisher of my faith. I know him to be one who is concerned about his people. Can I share with you this morning, prayer line family, that God is concerned about you. The God that we serve, he sits high and he looks low and he declares that the earth is the Lord. He declares that the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He declares that he is concerned about us. God himself is concerned about everything that we have in life. And so now he took me to this place. He said, daughter, I want you to remind not only our prayer line family on the phones, on, on our uh, uh, my, microfibic lines. He said, but those that are tuned in now on the Facebook page that is not aware of what had happened. Remember in the Bible, in the time when Pharaoh had persecuted the people of God, when Pharaoh had come in and he had bondage on the children of Israel, the Bible declares that it was the prayers or the cries of those that God heard at that time. He heard their cries. Amen. Uh, there's a sound that you make sometime that you're not aware of. There's a sound that comes from you that you're actually not aware of, but in that soul, man, hallelujah, the one that is filled with the Holy Spirit and those that have the assignment of your life, they can hear your soul crying out. This is why there's a lot of times, watch this, a lot of times I'll make phone calls and I'll say, baby, I don't bother you until you bother me. I don't bother you until you bother me. That means that your soul has petitioned me, amen, somebody, to not only to intercede for you any longer, but to actually make a physical contact by calling or by interceding or by hearing your voice. And so at that time, that's the concern of God because your soul makes a sound as unto the Lord that it gets God's attention. Uh, the word cry, it does not mean with tears. It does not mean that those things that are flowing out of our eyes. A cry is a strong 
sound. Hallelujah. It's a strong sound that is heard by God. And so God hears the strong sounds of the saints of God. And then he sends someone to rescue them. So he sent Moses to rescue the children of Israel. But it didn't go in just the way in which everyone thought it was going to go. It was not without struggle. Come on up in here. It was not without hardship. It was not a thing that was done so readily. And so God had to put Moses in a place where he know not to be weary in his well doing. He said, look ahead, look ahead, look ahead. Now, you're going to have some trouble when you try to get these children away from Pharaoh. Now, it's not going to come just that easy. It's not going to be a people that's just going to walk away from their past just like that. And so he has to understand and recognize the power that God has, the concerns that God has, because when a soul cries out, that's the time that you get God's attention. Uh-huh. It's that time when your soul begins to cry. I feel the Holy Ghost. When your soul begins to make a cry out as unto the Lord, then God does what? He hastens to perform every deed and every act of salvation, sanity, and rescuing you. And so the Bible says that when Moses began to rescue the children of Israel, there was a fight and there was a struggle. There's a fight and there's a struggle for your salvation. There's a fight and there's a struggle for your sanity. There's a fight and there's a struggle for you to come out of the place called bondage. But it did not stop the one that had the assignment. It did not stop the one that God had assigned to do the work in the kingdom of God. Amen. You have a work to do in the kingdom of God. And God wants for you to be the one that is well equipped to do the work of God. So Moses went in knowing the fact that God will never leave them nor forsake them. Moses knew the fact that he had a God that said, I am that I am. God began to do what? He began to bring leeks and he began to bring frogs and he began to bring locusts. He did so much stuff to get Pharaoh's attention. What well, can I share with you this morning, prayer line family? He's the same God. He's the same God. He said, I am that I am. God is trying to get the attention of the saints of God yet once again. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. We got a revelation about the storms that happened for the last few months. Uh, understand and recognize the first storm that was of a prevalency was the name Harvey. Harvey. The next storm was the storm Irma. Irma. And the third storm was the storm Maria. H-I-M. They spell H I. M. God says, I am him. He says, whichever way, however I have to get your attention, you're going to know that I am God. The H I M. He came in the rents. He came in the storms. He comes whichever way he wants to in order to get your attention. And so God allowed these tornadoes. He allowed these hurricanes. He allowed these storms to let us know that he is God. I am him. I am him. This is a just God season that we're in. We're in a season and a time. And I'm going to keep saying it until God comes back to redeem our soul. A prayer line family Facebook family, we are in a time where the body of Christ has to lean on God, where we have to know that it's God and God only. We don't need a job. Come on up in here. Cause God said he shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory, which are in Christ Jesus. A job supplies those things that are necessary to survive in life. But if you want eternal life, come on, you've got to know that God is God. So he said, I come in the volume of the book. I am the H I M. He is the him. He was the H in the Harvey. Come on up in here. He was the I in Irma and he was the M in Maria. So he said he has to bring a people back to know that he is God, to understand and recognize the power that God has in your life. Somebody shout just him, just him. We're in a just him moment and we're believing God that God is going to move on your behalf. Amen. God's going to move on your behalf. I saw those babies and those babies were in need for rescuing. Those babies needed someone to come and minister to them. Who have I been sent for this morning? You may have been mistreated in your childhood. And whenever we're having deliverance ministries, oh, did I tell you that I'm a deliverance pastor? That's right. That They, they don't call me the devil busting demon chasing for no reason. We cast out demons. We cast out devils, strongholds, oppressions, depressions right here on our prophetic prayer line. People get set free right here on our prophetic prayer line. So whatever you're in need for, can I share with you that God has set you up for such a time as this? God has set you up for him to come and be him in your life. H-I-M. God wants to be the him 
him in your life. And I believe God. A lot of times when we're talking with people and we share with them that it's your childhood, that these things stem from, uh, that circumstances in your life were they're apparently out of your control during that time, you had no control over who your parents were. You had no control over those that came together. And I like to say affectionately, Hazel and Bubba, that got in the backseat of the Chevy and did their due. Come on up in here. You didn't have any authority over that, but guess what? God knew your situation before it ever happened. He knew that you were going to be here. He knew who your parents were going to be. And so he came as the author and the finisher means that what me, he now instructs you and he finishes your life out for you. He timetables life before you're even there. He's already instructed you. He told Jeremiah, he said, I know you before I placed you in your mother's womb. So we've got to know that God is so concerned for us before he placed us in our mother's womb. He already knew our dilemmas. He knew our shortcomings. He knew your strong points. He knew your weak points. He knew every facet of your life before you ever formed on the earth. I'm looking at a person by the name of Shirley this morning, Shirley Nesbitt. I hear the Lord saying that things are getting ready to change in your life today for you're in a season of triumph, says the spirit of the Lord. You're in a season now where God is turning things around in your life. Situations that used to be strongholds, they're not going to be strongholds any longer. I hear the Lord Shirley saying that it's going to be a move of God. God. And God said he's ready to make such an impact on your life. Woman of God, you've got to listen by the spirit for when God speaks, he says, my servants hear thee. You're now positioned in a place in God where favor rests upon your life. I see the word favor written over your forehead and I see God allowing you to go in that place that we talked about on yesterday in this door in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hear the Lord saying that all of the talents and the gifts that you have, he has put them on preserve for such a time as this. For the Lord say he bless you now. The Lord say he keep you now and the Lord say he preserve thee for such a time as this father I thank you for the prophetic utterance now over this prophetic prayer line and God I pray now according to your word that you said the words that you place in my mouth they will be just like the prophet Samuel for not one word that I will speak will fall to the ground so Satan I serve your notice now every opposing spirit every diabolical quagmire of Satan's control anything that opposes the knowledge of God I bring into captivity every thought now that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. I speak the word of God that brings life. I speak the word of God that brings clarity. I speak the word of God that brings a defining moment in people's life where we are now the ones to defy gravity. It is done now in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Daughter uh, uh, Shanetta. Shanetta, I hear the Lord saying it's time for you to embark upon newness as well. I'm looking in the spiritual realm and I'm seeing people with contracts around you. I'm I'm seeing you having a new audience with those uh, that have decision makers. I hear the Lord saying that he's making room for you to be among those that are decision makers. Uh, for God say you have been overlooked for the last time, but the anointing that the Lord places upon you now shall take you to high places, shall take you to places where you will have an audience with those that you feel inferior to. Uh, those that have been your superiors, God said he's placing an anointing on you that you can match them with wits, you can match them with innovations, and you can match them with ideas for the Lord funnels and channels newness in your spirit man whereby the spirit man will give you information that you have no knowledge of father I thank you right now for the tangibleness of the anointing of God on your daughter's life I thank you right now Holy Spirit that you bring her into that place where the prophetic anointing will rest upon her life I'm looking at the woman by the name of Talidia Talidia the spirit of the Lord is upon you I see much much growth I see much much growth I, I see much much growth in your life and I see people around you uh, that are serving even the more. I hear the Lord saying that the servants of the Lord, uh, the services from the servants of the Lord shall increase says the spirit of the living God. For I have placed men and women around you that will not be jealous and I place them and I've placed men and women of God around you that have the blessings of the Lord that has the anointing of the Lord and those that are able to combat the wiles of the enemy. For I see the Lord using you, Ebo Shai, yes, Holy Ghost, as a fortress of fire. Woman of God, I see God using you as a fortress of fire. And when the enemy comes around you, the wall of fire will cause them to scatter ten ways, says the Spirit of the living God. For I catapult you now into a new place of time, a place of time whereby you will weep between the porch and the altar, and the words that you began to speak, they will be produce life. These words shall produce life, says the Spirit of the living God. Let me 
Father, we thank you for the anointing that destroys yokes on this prophetic prayer line. And God, I pray for the nations. I pray for the nations uh, as I bring the nations to the foot of the cross today, oh God. When when Zion cries, oh God. Somebody open your mouth on the prayer line and begin to say, just God. Come on, Facebook family, begin to shout, just God. This is a just God moment where the power and the presence of God will saturate Eboshia. It will saturate this entire universe. It will saturate and penetrate. Uh, the cloven likeness of God shall cover the face of the earth and God himself shall appear. God, we pray now that we have an audience with you and we pray now for these brothers and sisters, God, that are on this prophetic prayer line today, God. Sister Judith, I pray for you right now, daughter. The Lord said, Kalamasi Koboshia. Daughter, you've had enough loss in your family. You've had enough loss in your family. The Lord said the enemy will not give any other premature death. The Lord said that you have the power, daughter, and you got the unction of the Holy Ghost. Your Bible declares that you can decree a thing and it shall be established. Judith, your daughter, glory to God, my daughter Judith, the Bible says you open your mouth and you speak. He said life and death is in the power of your tongue. You got the power to decree a thing. Father, I accept my great gift of faith and agreement with your daughter today and we declare that no weapon that is formed against her shall be able to prosper for this is the heritage of the service of the most high God Satan I command you to back up off of this family I command every death angel to take your filthy hands off of this family there will be no other premature deaths I don't have a praying prayer line there will not be another interference of Satan you will not spoil the enemies of God and I hear the Lord daughter say that God is going to repay you. The Bible declares that when that enemy has been exposed, and we did expose Satan today, and so now that you've been exposed, you got to repay seven times. God, I thank you for the repayment. Somebody clap your hands on Facebook this morning. Somebody clap your hands on the prayer line this morning. Victory is mine. I told Satan to get thee behind for the victory today. It's mine. Do I have any victorious soldiers this morning? Do you know that we're building a, a team called the ASK Task Force? That's right, the ASK Task Force. Those that will do what? ASK, assassinate and annihilate Satan's kingdom. You're the one. You're the one. You're the one that God has assigned to assassinate and annihilate Satan's kingdom. You see, the enemy pushes people out of place. And I always tell my church and my prayer line this. Anytime someone has your best interest at heart, the enemy doesn't want you to stay around that person. The enemy doesn't want you to see you to get set free. But God told me, he said, anybody that has your assignment, you're going to recognize their voice. The person that has your assignment, you will recognize their voice. And I don't know about you, but I believe believe God. I believe that God has a seasoned people that are sick and tired of a devil. Every time you get something, you lose it. Uh, you gain a home and you go in foreclosure. You get a car and you go in repossession. God said it's time for that stuff to stop now. We are showing the sinners that we are winners. Show the sinners that we are winners. Invoke them in such a place that they want to become a part of us. They want to know the God that we serve. They want to know how are you making it when everybody else is going downhill. How is it that you're on top of a mountain and every Everything is down in a valley low. The God that we serve has all power in his hand. I speak to A. Marie Clark this morning. I speak to A. Marie Clark this morning. The Lord said hardships are no longer in your life. The Lord says that there's been a three-way triangle of some type of a thing that's been going on in your life. I see the number three. I hear the number three that something's been going three-way in your life. There's some type of a person that's in an equation in your life, in a situation in your life that does not belong there. And so the Lord release you from that assignment today. Father, we thank you that we break the works of the assignment that has been attached to your daughter's life today. We break the very workings of that assignment that has been sent to distract. I hear the Lord saying that there's been a strong spirit of distraction that has been sent to you in order for you not to fulfill purpose. But we open your eyes to see by the spirit today and we open your ears to hear by the spirit today what the Lord has to say to you. For the Lord say, I reposition you for triumph, says the spirit of God. I reposition 
position you now to possess things that you thought that you would never have. Those things that seem to be unattainable. The Lord said to write you a chart of goals. The Lord said, write the vision down and make it plain. Daughter, hear me now and hear me clearly. God said he wants you to write a chart of goals. And God said, prove that I not be God. That the things that I speak to you this day, they shall come to pass. For the Lord said he take you into a high place with him. Glory to God. He take you in a high visitation with the most high God. That he can release the anointing that destroys the yokes. Uh, that you can hear now those people that are not for you. Understand and recognize, A. Marie, God said that there are more for you than those that are against you. But it's the power of persuasion. That persuasion forces that calls you to veer and causes you to stagger at the promises of God. But you've got to be fully persuaded the same way that Paul was. Uh, a. Marie, daughter, you've got to be fully persuaded that the power and the presence of God will catapult you into new directions that the enemy cannot pause. Uh, the Lord said, your life shall never be on pause again. Your life shall never be on pause again, says the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. I speak to Janice this morning. I see your daughter, Janice Stevens. Janice Stevens, uh, the Lord said promotion is sent for you as well. 2018 is going to be a lucrative year for you, daughter. 2018 is going to be a lucrative year. And the Lord said that the enemies you saw in 2017, they shall not visit you in 2018. For the glory of God rest upon you and the power that God said you knew you had before he ever placed you in your mother's womb. You've always had an intimacy with God. You've had a, an affection for God. You've had... A, an intertwining, interwoven uh, peace that passes all understanding. And God said he made you that way. He said, don't you allow people to cause you to worry when worry is not in your equation. Don't you allow people to put you in a situation that God doesn't want you to be in. So God said that peace that Jesus left on this earth is the peace Janice that you have. And so God said you walk in the arena in which the Holy Spirit rests upon your life. He said when everybody else is in a, a quandary, when everybody else is all twisted and tied up and, and you don't have that urgency, the need to worry. The Lord said there's an anointing on your life not to worry. And so you filter in and allow God's presence and allow God's power to keep you in that place of no worry. An atmosphere brings set free. Daughter, your Bible declares that whom the son has set free is free indeed. I need you to walk in that freedom. Walk in that freedom, says the spirit of the living God. I hear the word of the Lord this morning for Cynthia Wanamaker. Cynthia Wanamaker. The Lord said that your hands are gifted, daughter. There are so many gifts that are in your hand. And the Lord said he'd take you back to the place where you dreamed. I I'm looking in the spiritual realm and I see when you were a very young girl that you were so ambitious about life. That whatever you put your mind to do and whatever you set your mind to do, uh, there was nothing that people could do to stop you. But there's a hesitation in the road somewhere between that and now there's been a hesitation in the in the road where now something happened in your life that caused you to back up off of your dreams but I've come this morning to push you back in a place called dreamed I've come this morning to push you back in the place where you saw yourself about the time that you were 35 and by the time that you reach a certain genre of life you knew that what you were going to have and so the Lord said he pushed you back into that place now daughter in a place where you believe God for the impossible your Bible declares that he that cometh to God must first first believe that he is God. Then he is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. If you seek God for these next seven months, uh, I speak to this young lady, you seek God's face for these next seven months, daughter, and God is going to have a blessing for you that you won't have room enough to receive. You're going to be just like the apostle Peter, where Peter began to go and launch out in the deep. He had to call other people in to help him catch the catch of the day. That what God has blessed him with so much so he couldn't contain it. I hear the Lord saying that there are seven people on this prophetic prayer line and there are 17 that are viewing me by way of Facebook today that God is getting ready to launch you out in the deep. God is getting ready to change your position in life. He's getting ready for his blessings to overtake you. Who have I been sent for this morning? Who have I been sent for? I, I've been sent for you and don't you hang this telephone up. Don't you disconnect from Facebook today. For the Lord has favor upon your life. Mount Zion you have made a cry. And the cries that you have made has gotten God's attention because it was not tears, but it's with a strong voice. you made a strong voice against calamities. you made a strong voice against destructive forces of hell. you made a strong voice. And so now God said he can trust you with this anointing. He can, I hear you, God. He said, I can trust you with my fortunes. My God from Zion, I hear you, Holy Ghost. God said he can, he can trust you with his fortunes. You get ready for God to bless you. You get ready for God to use you for there are 
an army of the people of God that will go in and that will not take down. I hear the Lord saying that he's placing you on the front line. He's placing you front and center. Those 17, you get ready to be used by God. You kebosia masha. I feel your Holy Ghost. Come on and creep up on my right side now. Glory to God. He said he's pushing a people out of obscurity. He's pushing a people out of the place where Satan can no longer tarry with your minds and toy with your minds and take your dreams and take your opportunities. It will not happen. You watch God. You watch God prophetic prayer line. You watch God Facebook community. You watch God. Somebody shout, I believe God. Come on, open your mouth and shout, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. It's your time. It's your time. Can I share? Did I tell you it's your time? Do you understand and recognize this is the season of opportunity? Remember in the Bible, remember in the Bible, in the book of Kings, uh, Kings chapter number 18, and, and I believe it was somewhere around verse number uh, uh, 44, uh, Ahab talked to the servant. He told the servant, he said, behold, there rise a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. Watch this. And he said, go up. It's time for you to go up. Because there's a cloud that's coming, but this cloud is going to come with blessings. This cloud is coming with opportunities. I'm prophesying and y'all missing it. Watch him. And the Bible says, he says, go up. I speak to this prophetic prayer line and I speak to the Facebook community. It's time for you to go up. The Bible said, he said, go up and prepare thy chariot. Get yourself together. Get preparations to go up higher now. Didn't we tell you that God said we're about to defy gravity? And so in order for you to defy gravity, you got to change your position. You can't stay in the same stance. You can't stay in the same, same stamina and think that things are going to change in your life. Come on. I believe God. God told this man, he said, go up. Hallelujah. Prepare thy chariot. Our chariots is what? The things that transport us. The things that we traveled by. That's your mind. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. Can I revelate on this prayer line this morning? Can I bring revelation? The thing that transports you is your mind. Because the mind is the thing that decides what you're going to do, where you're going to go, if you're going to move or if you're not. So he said, watch this prophetically. I speak. He said, prepare your mind and get thee down. The rain stopped thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heavens with, with black clouds, watch him, and wind. And there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezebel. Now, now watch this. This man had gone up how many times? He went seven times. He said, I don't see anything. I don't see anything. There's not a change. There's nothing happening. He said, go again. Go again. Do you have a push past anointing? Sometimes we got to learn how to push past negativity. We got to learn how to push past that. No, we've got to push past the obvious things. Amen. We've got to have a wherewithal to believe God for the impossible. It's the time now for the body of Christ to go up. He said, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up. He couldn't see anything by his natural eye. Couldn't see what was going on in the natural, but in the spirit, he didn't understand what God was doing. God began to work in the clouds the same way he worked in the storms, the same way he worked in the hurricanes, the same way he worked in the frogs and the, and the locusts and the canker worms when God was delivering the children of Israel out of bondage. This is your day to come out of bondage. This is your day for God to release you from heartaches and pains. Sister Tijuana my baby girl that visited from, I think it was Palm Bay or Melbourne, that visited the church the other day. Uh, the Lord said that you seek him so much so for your family and for others that he's going to give you a double portion anointing because there's no selfishness in you. The Bible says that when Job began to cry for others, took his eyes off of what he was going through, wasn't concerned about the calamities that were around him, wasn't concerning about the losses that he had, Subjected uh, to children dying, cattle dying, and anything that could be taken away from him, it was taken. Uh, Sister Tijuana, God said, it's your time. Because you're not selfish. You're always asking God to bless someone else and help someone else. And Lord, if you could just help this person, and help that person. God said, it's your time now. It's your season now that God is going to bless you. For his blessings are there to change your opportunities. His blessings are there for you to be repositioned at the right place at the right time. Does anyone want, want to be at the right place at the right time? Anyone want to always be in the right place at the right time? Well, you know what the Bible says. He said the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. 
Your steps are already preordained by God. If we could ever have a real revelation about that, if we could ever obtain a full understanding about how God has already positioned you, how he's already placed you in a place of authority, and we just have to learn how to walk therein, walk in the authority that God has given you. He said, I'm not a man that I should lie. Neither am I the son of man that I should repent. Come on. He knows who you are before the foundations of the world. Your steps are ordered by God and we have to learn how to walk therein, producing the finished product of your purpose. The finished product of your purpose is to do what? To declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. To go ye therefore and compel them to come in, to go into the highways and the hedges, to preach the word of God, to do what God called you to do. Let's don't just walk in life and never be satisfied. Let's don't peruse around the corridors of uh, Beverly Hills mansions and Rodeo Drive and all you can do is just pass by and say, if I coulda, woulda, shoulda. No, 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 no. You you put your shop, you put your boutique on Rodeo Drive. Have our prayer line this morning. Have I a people that can come on and go with me? You, you position your business right there where the others are. You hobnog around those, amen, uh, that God has already shown favor on their lives. And that same favor, because you're a believer, it belongs to you. Because you're a child of God. If the people of God could understand what God has positioned for us already, amen. That what God has given us, what he has conditioned our hearts and our minds for. There's a conditioning of the spirit. It's called the seed of our consciousness being seared by the Holy Ghost. Somebody write that down. It's called the seed of our consciousness being seared by the Holy Ghost. The seed of your consciousness being seared by the Holy Ghost. Once the Holy Ghost takes over, it's no longer I, but it's the Christ that liveth on the inside. This is when we know that our steps are ordered by God because we are fine-tuned. Amen. We're fine-tuned to hear him and his voice only. My sheep shall know my voice and not another voice will they follow. So when we fine tune our spirit to listen to God, you don't have to second guess God. You don't have to ask God a thousand times. Is this you God? How do I know this you God? How can I be sure that this you father? <laughs> Come on. You know it's God. You know it's him. That's him. That's him. He said that I am the author and the finisher of your faith. So you know that there's nothing in between in God. His word is yay and amen. So let's don't make up a middleman. Let's don't put something in the equation. Don't add to it. And don't take away. He said, not one jot, not one tittle. And that's what the word say. His words say he sent his word to heal them. It's the seed of that consciousness that has to be seared by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is that what Jesus Christ left on the earth. He said, I go away to prepare a place for you. And so what he wants us to do is prepare for great. He said, I've got a mansion for you. So why can't we live in mansions on the earth? Why we got to live in shanties and shack and outhouses? Y'all ain't going to pray with me this morning. Why is it now that we can't get comfortable in where we are going? He wants you to live this life of, of comfortableness. He wants you to live this life of wealth and fortune and fame. Amen. Now, so uh, in order to prepare us for a place that he's already prepared for us. And I tell you all the time, family. God had more confidence in us than we've got in ourselves. Jesus had so much confidence in you that he went ahead of you and prepared something for you because he knew you were going to win. He doesn't choose losers. God knew, am I bringing revelation or what? God knew that you were going to win. So he said, I'm going to go ahead of you and I'm going to fix things and put them in order for you because I know you're coming. I know you're going to be there. Come on up in here. I know you're going to make it. You're going to do this. And so he went ahead of us, prepared the way, the the same way that God prepared the land of milk and honey. He prepared the promised land before the children of Israel got there. He said, your faith has to take you to the place where it already exists. So now our faith is going to take us to the place where our mansion already exists. Who have I been sent for? Who have I been sent for? I've been sent for you. And don't you hang this telephone up. Don't you get off of Facebook now. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. God has a way of doing things and only God can do what is necessary for you now it's called a faith move it's called an objective that God has to discipline the hearts and the minds of the believers we're in a time now where principalities are going to be shut down we're in a time now where God is going to use those that's been on the back burner those that have been overlooked been overlooked amen those who have been in obscurity and places where other people have overlooked you, haven't had a place or a position uh, uh, in places um, that people would recognize you. 
would recognize you. But God said, I recognize you. I know the works and I know the thoughts that I have for you. I know your plans, says the spirit of God. I know the plans. You just don't know it. See, the enemy knows it. And I always affectionately tell everyone where we go. And this is a traveling ministry. We travel around the world. Don't ever let the devil make you make a decision that you never thought of for yourself. Don't give him that much leadway. Don't give him that much opportunity. Don't give him that much space in your life. Don't give him that much space in your life. Don't let him think that he has that much power over your life. Amen. We're the ones. We're the ones. We're the ones that God is going to use. We're the ones that has been handpicked by God, chosen by God, and they're in a thing the devil can do about it. You're embarking upon the best time of your life right now. Those of you that had backgrounds that seem to not match everybody else's, maybe per adventure you were an orphan, or maybe per adventure you were adopted, maybe per adventure you don't know who your parents are, but know that you have a father that loves you. You have a father that cares for you. You have a father that uh, concerned about your ambitions and your career but he wants to take you out of bondage. I'm going to preach this word until Jesus comes back. We are a people that are so connected to our jobs and we're so connected in Pharaoh's bondage. And that is not what God wants for us. He wants you to have lucrative careers. He wants you to have education, but he wants you most of all to be self-sufficient. He wants for you to lean and depend on him. And it's called sowing, giving, reaping, seed, time, harvest. If we could get that formula down, we'll get exactly what God has for us. He doesn't want for you to have to clock into a nine to five job continuously, never being able to take a vacation, never being able to enjoy life itself, but only just being struck down. When we take vacation, we stay home and do what? I'm just going to do spring cleaning. I'm not going anywhere. I think we'll just stay around the house and we'll just, you know, do a little cleaning and just tidying up. No, 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 no. That's not life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that which more abundantly. So we've got to learn how to do what? How to live this thing for real. We've got to learn how to allow God to interrupt Satan's ploy and his tactics and learn how to be disciplined by the Holy Ghost. I call it the, the, the developmental process of life. It's a developmental process of life that God has for you for the betterment of your life. The battle doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. Let God arise and let your enemies be scattered. We are victorious in 2018. We are the winners in 2018. But it's going to come to a place where the church has to be the church for real. I'm trying to stay light on y'all till we can get a big audience and y'all know I'm going in. Anybody that knows me know we're going in. God is taking us back to the old landmark. He wants us to go to a place where we weep between the porch and the altar. He wants us to go back to a place where we know that he is God. There's been too much worldliness in, in, employed into the body of Christ. There's been too much form of godliness and denying the power thereof in the body of Christ. So God has to find himself a people. The Bible declares them a remnant out of the remnant. Means that it's not the whole fabric. It's not the whole fiber. It's just a portion of that which. And I believe that you are that portion. I believe that you're the ones that God is going to use in these last and evil days. But it comes with an objective of repositioning your spirit. Minister Alicia, you got to reposition your spirit daughter. You've been a prime target for the enemy. But if you don't recognize who you are in God, he won't stop. Uh, there's a thing called authority. Once we take spiritual authority, it combats the wiles of the enemy. Once we learn how to take spiritual authority, um, the Bible says that when God sees that blood-stained banner, come on up in here, the death angel and the destructor and the destroyer, it must pass by. So maybe peradventure we aren't raising our blood-stained banner high enough. Maybe peradventure we are not putting it in an obvious place. Let's take it out of obscurity and let the blood-stained banner work for us. We are the people that has the new opportunities in Christ Jesus. We're the ones that God's going to filter down and anointing in our lives so much so that it'll cause that enemy to run seven ways. You have the power and you have the authority. The Lord said that he's now raising up new prophetic intercessors. The Lord has need of new prophetic intercessors, those that know how to weep between the porch and the altar, those that know how to call on the name of Jesus, those that know that you have spiritual authority. He told us months ago that it's time for the community and this world to form a human chain of righteousness. The Lord said that there must be a human chain of 
righteousness that is formed, whereby now we can intercede before things happen. A thing in Las Vegas, it should not be. Uh, the Bible says he does nothing except he revealed it first in service to prophets. So there's somebody that's out of place that are not praying like we should, that are not tearing down these strongholds and these principalities. Your reward come from your obedience. We don't have to concern ourselves about money. We don't have to concern ourselves about positions, lucrative careers. Once we get in the place where God wants us to be, uh, we keep seeking his face uh, continuously. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. It's in power. The dunamis power that God gave us is what we have to walk in. We have to walk in that power. God is looking for himself a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. He's looking for a man and a woman of God that will know that God is God, that knows how to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, but can open their mouth and decree a thing, and it shall be established. And that's what we're doing. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Amen? I believe God. What about you? I believe God. What about you? The story has not been told. It has not been told what God has for you. It has not been told. It's only a portion of the story being told now. We don't have the big picture yet. Man, I tell you, if God would really reveal the things that he really has for you, it would blow your mind. Sister Michelle, it would literally blow people's mind, uh, the things that God has for you. We have to realize that it is God. It is God himself. God has a way of doing things according to his word. He said, my ways are not your ways. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And so the way we come to a conclusion of a matter is not the resolve for God. It totally differs from what God really wants for us. Say, for adventure, you went to college and you said, well, Lord, I'm going to be a physician. And God said, that's cute. That's okay. But in actuality, he wants you to be a missionary. In actuality, God has something totally different for you. Usually what your passion is, is your calling. Usually that thing that is so intimate within you that you can taste it, you can feel it, you get that ump every day. And I always tell you that that thing that nobody have to pay you to do, that you would do that if you ever never got a paycheck for it, that's usually that thing that God wants you to embrace and where it's him on the inside. He said, before I placed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. So God wants to get in contact with the H-I-M on the inside. He wants to find himself on the inside. Remember when he looked for Adam and Eve, he said, Adam, where are you? He said, Adam, why is it that I have to look for you now? God shouldn't have to look for purpose on the inside of a believer. Purpose is indwelt. It's, that, it's right there on the inside it's that unction to function it's that thing that god i want to satisfy you if i don't satisfy anybody else father i want to give you honor god i want to please thee if i please nobody else because when a man's ways is pleasing unto the lord amen he'll make your enemies be at peace with you when a man's ways is pleasing unto god he will make your enemy be your footstool all you got to do is please god the rest of this thing a piece of cake the rest of a piece of cake. Amen. It's a piece of cake, a prayer line family. It's a piece of cake, a Facebook community. It's a piece of cake. And you're the one to do the job. God chose you. He chose you out of all the people in the earth. You know how many of your classmates you've buried already? You know how many people have already gone on to glory? You know how many mishap others have had, but God spared you? How many times have we been in and out of situations? Uh, sorted paths in our life, uh, things that just didn't resemble a Christian, but he gave you an opportunity to get it right. And now his blessings are upon your life now. If we grab a hold of that formula and have a steadiness, unmovable, unstoppable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Your labor is not in vain. There's a strong tower. There's a high pavilion where the righteous run in and they are saved. There's a place in God called safety. If we will let God put the safety net out for us, he will never leave us nor forsake us. Just get in that secret place with God. And then guess what he gave us? He gave us the shield of faith. The shield of faith is that thing that, that, that stops the fiery darts of the enemy, that causes that enemy not to per per permeate and saturate and penetrate our lives. Put up that shield of faith. Do you know what a shield of faith is? It means that I believe God for the impossible, that God has that protective force around me, that force field that I can't even see. It's called faith. The force field that I can't see that protects me from all odds. It protects me from all obscurities. It protects me from the wiles of the enemy, from the objectives of Satan. It's right there. But you've got to be able to do what? You've got to know that God is God. He's looking for you. Did I tell you he was looking for you? Leslie, did I tell you that God is 
looking for you, daughter. He's looking. Alicia, did I tell you? Alicia Daniels, don't you know that God is looking for you? Evangelist Edwina, God is looking for you. He said, I looked for a people and I couldn't find one. Isaiah said what? Isaiah said, here am I, Lord. Send me. I will go. Sister Cece, are you willing to go this morning? Shall I look for another people? Or is this prophetic prayer line the one? Is this fake book family? Is it a fake book or a Facebook? We're not a fake book. We're a Facebook. We face the book of God. It's called the word of life. We look in that book and we find ourselves. We implement righteousness and holiness in our lives. And then you shall eat the good of the land. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. But guess what? God found you. He implemented his instructions in your life, that developmental process of life. There are young men and young women. Your children are going to do much better than ever done before because you're on this prophetic prayer line now. Can I prophesy in your life? Your children are going to now dream dreams according to the word of God and prophesy. Your children are going to walk in an anointing that they've never walked in before. The scheme of the enemy is to bring sickness and afflictions upon your children. Watch this. Anytime you ever begin to see the enemy bringing accidents and incidents and sickness and things like that on your children, he's trying to bring premature death in their lives. Parents should not bury their children. Amen, somebody. So you have to know now, because you're on this prophetic prayer line, there's going to be such a hedge of protection around your children that I have not seen and you have not heard, neither has it entered into hearts of men, the things that God has in store for you and your family. You be that catalyst. You be that point where you'll get up early in the morning and seek God's face and hear a word from the Lord, get instructions from God, bringing the power and the favor of God upon your life that you can add others in your life. Amen bringing others into your life. He'll do this. He, he'll do this. God has handpicked you for this one. And guess what? Kiki couldn't do it. Bumquisha couldn't do it. Pookie can't do it. Only you can do this one. Only you can do this one. Only and the presence of God that God has for you in your life. There's a divine connection that God wants for you. He wants it for you and he wants it for you. And guess what? He already knew you. He knew that you were going to be on this prophetic prayer line. He knew that you were going to be viewing this broadcast live and Facebook and he has opportunities for you. Sister Winona, there's a spirit of God upon your life right now. I heard the Lord saying that he's correcting some things in your life. There's been seasons past whereby you've uh, uh, doubted God for new opportunities, but I hear the Lord say the season of newness is upon you. I see a new career change in your life and I see your objective changing so much so that you're going to believe God for the impossible. In the season that you're in now, daughter, believe God for the impossible. I hear the Lord saying that strongholds are being broken off of your life. I see some generational curses that have been passed down in your lineage, but the Holy Spirit identifies them this morning and he releases you from this morning, says the Spirit of the living God. There's a release and there's a shifting in your life that's going to cause you to be the head and not the tail. That's going to cause you to be the lender and not the borrower. Reposition yourself in a stance called prayer. Reposition yourself to learn how to weep between that porch and the altar and whatsoever things you desire when you pray, if you believe them, you shall have them, says the spirit of the living God. Leslie, there's a, a, a thing that's been going on uh, in your mother's life. There's some things that's been going on in your mother's life. I speak Holy Spirit to both you on my side. There's been some type of a sickness that has been in your mother's life. But I hear the Lord saying that he healeth her this day. The spirit of the Lord healing your mother now. He's bringing a spryness in her steps. Um, uh, he's bringing her out of a place where the enemy would try to pull her away and cause her to retrieve and retract away from life. Um, the Lord filters now newness. I hear the Lord saying there's newness in your mother's body. There's an awareness of her and she's going to want to do things more like she's never done before. She's going to want for you to go places with her. She's going to do those things that she used to enjoy in life. I hear the Lord saying 15 years ago, he'd take her back to the spryness of 15 years ago, uh, the things that she loved to do, adventurous things that she would love to go out and do. The Lord said there's going to be awakening in her spirit, man, and he's going to cause her to be alert, sharp, keen, and, and firmer than ever before. Father, I thank you for this newness on this daughter's mother. I thank you for implementing righteousness, holiness, and good health in her life. I speak long life. I speak long life in Jesus' name. Amen. And praise God. Praise God. Get ready, body of Christ, because God wants to do some great things in your life. Get ready for this season that you're upon now is the best season that you're going to ever have in life. New opportunities. It's not going to be a concern of yours. Uh, monies. It's not going to be a concern of yours. 
uh, losing. It's not going to be a concern of yours because God is repositioning this body of Christ for an H I M, a just God move. And what about you? I believe God. I believe God. Don't forget we have our ladies retreat prepared for those of you that did not hear earlier. Uh, we're getting ready to take an excursion. We're taking the ladies to the Dominican Republic. That's right. We're going to the Dominican Republic. This is a traveling ministry. We preach around the world. Wherever the Lord sends us to go, we go that. We've been the one that's been on the back burner. We've been the one that God has put in a place of obscurity and a place of seeking his face. And now it's time for him to push me to the nations and I obey God. I told you I had that dream this morning about the baby that had been mishandled, misused, abused uh, because they had the wrong caretaker. They were in the wrong hands. That's the body of Christ. God said this body of Christ has been in the wrong hands. And now I must change them over to Moses with a skirt on. And I believe God. We're going to the Dominican Republic, August the 13th. Through the uh, 17th, 2018, we're going to Crown Villas in the Dominican Republic. I'll call our administrative line at 407-545-1133 for more information. Uh, we're starting our payment plan. We have deposits that you can make, uh, three deposits, so you can be paid in full. The only thing that you're going to be responsible for after you complete your registration is your passport and your flight tickets. You must have a passport to travel uh, over the waters. Amen. And you must have your own airline tickets. But other than that, once you complete your deposit and your registrations of $235 three times, only a three-time deposit of $235 for a six days and five nights stay at beautiful mansions in the Crown Villas in the Dominican Republic. Call our admit line 407-545- 1133 and I believe God father we thank you for everything that's been said and done today we thank you for this newness this place that you're causing us to embark upon we thank you for the power of grace upon the lives of the believers you said that my grace is sufficient for thee so I thank you that you found yourself a people that will obey and out of that obedience God out of the sacrifices that we make you open the windows of heaven now and pour us out blessings that we don't have room enough to receive I thank you for the receivers on this prayer line the recipients God those sheep God that now hear your voice and they're ready to run in this race they're ready to go and do great exploits in life for you said that the sons of Issachar they do know the signs of the times I thank you for assigning me to these thy servants God that we can make a difference in their lives that we can speak life and that which more abundantly now I pray for those under the sound of my voice today God that new opportunities arise that they shall be the head and not the tail that they shall be the supervisors they shall be the lenders they shall have their own businesses they shall be lucrative entrepreneurs entrepreneurs and I thank you for this new power of God and the grace thereof following each and every one of us from this day forth in Jesus name we pray amen and amen well we're getting ready to go on our prayer lines we do have the prayer line family 712-432-0075 we're going to our prayer line now and it's remaining on the prayer line but those that are on Facebook we're going to try to do just an hour with you guys but we're on the prayer line so if you haven't had enough of God then call in that number and stay with us on our prayer line broadcast as well 712-432-0075 your access code is 533-510 good morning pastor crenshaw good morning god bless you god bless you good morning my classmate glorious good morning we bless god for each and every one of you that are here stay tuned tomorrow we're here every day monday through friday 6 a.m the devil busting the demon chasing the woman the wisdom and the word i am senior pastor of dimensions international ministries senior pastor of city of truth international ministries in atlanta georgia and travailing men and women changing a nation through prayer prophetic prayer line we are changing a nation back to god uh, prayer line family, can we? Yes, we can. We can change a nation back to God. We admonish everybody on Facebook that you are to live fully and to live freely. We'll see you back tomorrow morning. Join us on our prayer line. We're still there. Call in the prayer line. God bless you. God bless you. Don't forget to share. Please share this broadcast with everyone. God bless you, family. We love you. God bless. <laughs>